We're now presented with the speed loop auto tuning portion of the wizard. Please note the warnings on this page about needing the previous steps to be properly configured. The motor should now be installed with load attached along with space for the motor movement. In our case, we will now place the AGV on the ground to proceed. The motor will operate in closed loop speed mode. The power source should be capable of absorbing the regenerative energy during the motor deceleration, or you should incorporate a shunt regulator. Click Next. At the next page, we need to configure something. Since this is a dual motor AGV, we want to use concurrent target to make sure the motors are moving at the same time. In our case, where both encoder and hall sensors are available in the motor, we will select the sensor with the higher resolution as the feedback, which in this case is the encoder. Click Next. On the next screen, we have more motor parameters to set. We need to change the movement to linear, traction to AGV traction, where the linear movement will allow us to set a safety zone radius in meters. We then need to set the wheel radius, gearbox ratio, and wheelbase length. The gearbox ratio can be found in the motor data sheet. We see that the gear ratio is nine to one, and thus we will set a value of nine. We then need to finish the motor parameters. We set the max speed, then we set the acceleration and deceleration values, which 2000 in this case should be acceptable for this application. Please note that higher acceleration and deceleration values require more current for motion. Excessively high values may demand current levels that exceed what the drive can provide or surpass the motor safe operational ratings. Ensure that the desired motion profile is compatible with the electrical capabilities of the system. It's important to set the motor torque constant, which is measured in Newton meters per RMS amp. This parameter is used in torque control mode to provide the direct torque command. The drive will calculate the required motor current based on this parameter. Pay attention to the units as they are in Newton meters per RMS amps. Click Next. On the next page of the speed loop auto tuning, we must ensure our brakes are released as the motors will run. Select the Start PI Tuning button and wait for this process to finish in which the motors will run. Once finished and the gains are configured, select Next. On the next page, we will select the speed loop bandwidth. We recommend starting at the bandwidth located in the green zone to start. Select Next. We are once again presented with a graph of the system. This will plot the sensor speed and ramp command to visualize the step response of the system. We will want to ensure the sensor speed follows the ramp command by adjusting the speed loop bandwidth from the speed gains tab. For this, we will demonstrate performance at different bandwidths. Once the performance is within spec where the ramped command is followed by the motor speed, we can then press next. This will bring up the ramped command response graph in which we will again ensure the sensor speed is following the ramped command. Should this need adjustment, adjust the speed loop bandwidth from the speed gains tab until the performance is within spec. For this test, we will reduce the time period that this will run as our AGV doesn't need to run for as long. We will also change the encoder speed percent to feedback to give more accurate results for the ramped command response.
Again, once the performance is within spec and the feedback follows the ramp command, we can then press next. As we can see from the graph, our feedback closely follows the ramp command. With the performance within spec, we can press next. This will present a summary window summarizing all the configuration parameters that are changed for the system. Click save and finish to finish the auto tuning process. We can then run our AGV using the run tab within RoboRun Plus, in which it will run in closed loop speed mode, allowing for accurate movement of the system. For safe AGV operation from the run tab, it is preferable to use console commands and configure the watchdog timer to disable motor power after a specified time to reduce the risk of unwanted movement. Let's set the watchdog timer to one and a half seconds via console box at the bottom of the run tab. To enable control via console commands, a command slider must be muted. We will use the speed serial command to issue a motor speed and RPM to both motors. By using an underscore, a speed command can be sent to both motors simultaneously. Note that depending on the motor's direction, opposite commands might need to be sent to each motor to allow the AGV to move in a straight line. The command can then be reversed to move in the opposite direction. This concludes our demonstration. Thank you for watching. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our talented field application engineers who will be happy to assist should trouble arise.